Good morning, everyone. This is Dan Sissick, and I am filling in today. Um, as you can see, Samantha's on the road traveling. Uh, she went down to spend a little time with her daughter for her daughter's birthday. But we have Lori and Karen here with us also. Um, hopefully, uh, Jason or any others that want to join on will join in with us. Um, and Catherine uh, says she has something she has to take care of and so will not be joining us. So I will let everybody have a chance to step out and introduce themselves and then we'll get started on chapter 11 of the book, Love, Life, God, The Journey of Creation by Jared Hewitt. And so I will meet myself out and I'll let everybody else jump out and introduce themselves. Hello, Lori Emmons in Denver. I'm Karen Lohoff in Mesa, Arizona. Hey, it's Samantha uh, on the road. <laughs> and I'm Dan Sissick, acting as the host this week in place of Samantha. Um, so with that, we are in chapter 11 of the book, Love, Life, God, The Journey of Creation. Um, and Last week, uh, if anybody wants to kind of just fill in just a little brief catch up and overview from last week um, before I start reading um, where we left off from last week. Yeah, I can kind of fill in a bit. Um, did it mute my video too when I went over here? I don't know. Can you hear me? Can you see me? I can't hear you. Yes, we can hear you and see you. Okay, cool. Sorry. I, I'm trying to drive and pay attention to the road. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I think last time we kind of finished on uh, talking about zero point. That was what it was kind of talking about at the beginning of the chapter of just kind of finding that, that space between, um, you know, your desires and then all of your stories around why you can or cannot uh, accomplish those things because we kind of get it in our head that we are, um, you know, we have all these reasons why we can't do something or why it isn't going to work in some way. And those are the things that block us from creating our manifestation. And we also kind of talked about the fact that creation actually does happen or manifestation of the universe kind of does present stuff to us really, really fast. But we don't recognize it because we have all these stories around what we want to have happen. And for example, uh, I mentioned last week about um, this house. We're trying to find a house, my husband and I, and we have all this criteria that uh, that we, you know, we have all these things that we want out of this property. And so we've been looking for over a year. And every time something comes up, it doesn't meet our criteria. And so therefore, we're kind of blocking what the universe is presenting to us uh, by, you know, having these guidelines. And, you know, although that is what, what we do as humans, we have these, these wants and needs and they're very specific. The universe is constantly throwing property at me. Every time I get on the MLS, it's showing me another property. And so it's only my narrow desire, or my narrow kind of lines of, of, what we want that is blocking the universe from giving me a property so um we kind of talked about that a little bit about we can kind of recognize where we're blocking things by uh just recognizing how we have like a narrow idea of what it is that we want because if we said okay i just want a piece of property and i don't care what it is i'd have it right away the universe presents it to me instantly but because I have all these criteria, then it takes longer for me to find the thing that I'm looking for. And, and we can recognize that we do that to ourselves in many different ways uh, throughout our lives. Uh, you know, people come into our lives all the time. So for instance, if you're wanting a relationship and you say, I just want a relationship, here, there's a person right here in front of you. The universe throws them right there, but you don't like them for some reason. And so that one, you know, it, you're blocking that possible relationship. So um, it was just kind of an interesting uh, way of looking at it. And um, 
So anyway, that's where we're at on that. So Dan, if you want to take back over, meet me out. Thanks, Samantha, for helping catch up a little bit. And I'm going to add something on top of that and then get into the reading. Um, I understand what you talk about because 16 years ago, after I had bought my first condo and found a condo I liked, but it was not necessarily the perfect one, but it was within the price range and it was my first one. And I, you know, remember somebody saying, well, remember, you're looking, this is your first place. You know, it's not probably going to be your ultimate place. And I'm like, okay, I took it with that and took it under the, you know, assumption that this is, you know, me starting out and it fit what I needed and what I wanted. So I bought it. But then when I sold it and was looking for a new place, I had had, you know, a computer, I had check stolen. I had, um, you know, my car stolen out of my parking spot out of that place when I lived there. So in my mind, I wanted a place that had a garage. I had, a, you know, certain things. But it was weird when I was looking at, um, I don't remember all the places I looked at, but I remember two that I distinctly looked at. One I looked at that I did not like one bit at all in this place, and I fell in love with this place. But the one place um, kind of reminded me of my cousin's house, and it had that little short, not even half wall around part of its living and separating. And I hated that. It's like, no, I want my, you know, at least that area to be open and free and, you know, not have anything blocking. And even though it wasn't blocking, you could still see through. But in my mind, I'm like, that's blocking the flow. And you have to walk around and go. I'm like, no, I don't want that. When I saw the place that I ended up buying, I liked the fact that the rooms were separate on the far ends away from each other. Because in my old place, the bedrooms were right next to each other. And of course, I could hear my roommate and anybody he was entertaining <laughs> in his room, you know, especially in overnight hours, <laughs> you know, um, I did not want that, you know. So when I found this place, but the, my living room, dining area and kitchen area were open and I, and immediately I felt the vibe that this is it. You know, but I, that vibe is what hit me. It wasn't so much even the, that, you know, you know, because I'm above everybody's garages. I'm on the second floor above everybody's garages. The other two units are behind me. The other unit that I loved even more, but it was way out of my price range. I kicked it out right away because of that price range. But this one, and I ultimately bought it. And I've been here 16 years and still love it to this day. You know, so I think that's goes into you know knowing what you want but being understanding enough of sometimes when it throws it right at you and the vibe hits you you know sometimes you have to go with that vibe so that way you can work on that manifestation and get it moving forward so now i'm going to jump into where uh based on what i've been told where we left off last week uh <clears throat> in chapter 11 and i'm going to read the paragraph above just to kind of lead into the one below it says by bringing in your story or or who you perceive yourself to be you limit creation you're saying i want this thing yet you are bringing in definitions judgments and beliefs which say to the universe it has to be this shape size color and fit exactly within these parameters or i can't receive it no matter how hard you try to deliver it it's a shame to come this far only only to not receive because you haven't let go of conditions based purely on stories. And this is uh, Jared talking. Um, this reminds me of a story I once heard about poachers using traps to catch mon monkeys. The monkey would reach in to grab the food and their hand would get caught. If the monkey just let go, his hand would have slipped right out and he would have been free. Yep. People hold on to their stories because like what was trapping the monkey, it's their food. They believe they will cease to exist without them. Therefore, they cling to their very thing that is keeping you from their freedom. And we can all release our stories by claiming self-love. Yes, however, we would like to suggest that before you empty this, employ this claim, you make the decision to move forward and just let your stories go. 
you must ultimately decide once you have made the decision, your energy will, will move into the next phase. And then he, uh, Jared is saying, can you give me an ex example of creating from a blank page as opposed to recreating from story? And uh, the angel or the universe or whoever he's talking to says, yes, if you will let the energy in, your headache is a form of resistance. Because I am self-love. I am self-love. Long pause. It, I felt it go. It didn't go as an evaporate. It returned to that which you are, pure source energy. It is important for us to make this distinction because we do not want you to think that you are en that your energy goes away. You are source, consistently drawing from source. Now, for your example, think of your creation like building a car. We know you do not know anything about building cars, but you know some of the parts that go into its creation. If you were told to build one, what would you do? And then he says, well, I'd start by, out by reading about car assembly and viewing blueprints. Yes, that would be one avenue of creation. What's next? Eventually, I'd have to start ordering parts, right? Right. Now, these parts are symbols of your story. The outside of your car may look different from others, but under the hood, there will always be certain basic parts. Thus has been the history of human creation to this point. You have created many different models, but you have been working from the time, from the same basic designs using the same parts in this case. Maybe you came into this life with certain parts, and maybe you picked others up along the way. Regardless, these points have gone into making everything you perceive to be you or your story. The parts then are my beliefs, judgments, and ideas, etc. And I think this might be a good place to stop and kind of get you guys' thoughts and feelings on the, you know, what we just covered and how it might affect us or how we can be more cognizant or aware of when we're in these moments of the power to re- imagine the energy, I guess, or where we're directing the energy or how we're receiving the energy and to moving forward with where we want to go. So any ideas or thoughts or observations? I had some thoughts and observations. <clears throat> um, it's hard to totally erase your story, especially in a situation like mine. I am looking for relationships and situations and health issues and all of this to change. And having been where I've been, it's so hard to erase the entire story because there are certain limitations and if we all are creators like god people or whatever is very difficult to look past the challenges staring you in the face um i have an incredible situation where i live it's good but 25 years ago, when I needed a place, I was just praying and saying, God, if only you'd give me this certain thing. So there has to be some personal parameters and ideas, expectations, I guess you could call it, of what you want. So how that can be a blank page. I am really struggling with that whole idea. Yeah, I tend to agree with you a little bit there because of even my background, my situation with what I lived through as a child, it's hard to turn that off and to not say it hasn't affected me and not affected me into 
And, but I also know it has affected me in some adverse ways because of relationships and things like that and what I'm looking for in relationships. It's, it's not that, but in some, <laughs> I don't want to say weird, it just odd way, I still sometimes feel like I have some of those distinctions in some of the relationships I have with people that there's still that struggle, there's still that, you know, um, I don't want to say abuse, but that tension and that similar type of energy. And I don't know if it goes back because that's the one part of the story or part of the energy I'm used to and what I've dealt with so on more of uh, the physical plane in the, on this earth and not realizing that you know maybe I can get past it or work past it but now it's like being able to truly let go and let my connection with God and source to me I, I call it God you know to get into that so maybe I don't forget but I let go and be able to get past that and to be able to as the book claims say claim self-love and move forward in that and I but I, I I'm like you Lori I still have a hard time you know not realizing the physical or the what surrounds me or what I've dealt with as the past as what that's what I've dealt with and that's what I know and we've lost Samantha so hopefully she'll jump back on um Jason's supposed to be jumping on here in a minute um but I don't know I, I do you have any thoughts Karen on for you or for your from where, where you come from or what you've been through or feelings? Well, when Lori said the few words, um, I was praying for a place. Uh, she was talking about a number of years ago. It just left me right into a time that I hardly ever think of, but I was, I was looking for a place. I was driving in the night. I think it might have been raining. Um, I'm pretty sure I was crying, and um, I, I just didn't know. Karen froze now, so hopefully she'll come back on. Samantha, It when you jumped off, it made you the host again, so you need to make me the host again. Um, so hopefully Karen will... Say again. You, you you were freezing up on us and we didn't hear all of what you were saying. So you might want to restate that again. Okay. Uh, I was really in, in bad shape looking for this place. I just had to, I just had to find something. And I think probably my main concern was fitting in with, the, with the money. And uh, I was just driving south of where I had lived and I circled around in a uh, um, I think it was like a it was it ended up being a trailer park, but I think it was like a kind of a leisure park. It was in an area it was not here, but it was somewhere where uh, people got second homes and uh, in this particular place they had uh, they were, you know, they were trailers. I'm, I, I'm sorry, my words are not coming to me well. Um, but I drove around this corner and there was this time. And she froze up again. So I don't know if we're going to lose her or not. Um, hopefully we don't. Um, but, uh, Anything trouble that you in, trouble in the airwaves today? Yep, <laughs> there are no basements. Um, 
and there where I was, uh, I, I certainly hadn't seen anything quite like that. Um, but I did see a little for sale sign. It was a, it was a homemade for sale sign and it basically just had a, a phone number. And do you know, I was able to get a hold of that place and I loved that place dearly. It's probably the place that I, if I could have my druthers, I would live out my life uh, in that little place. Um, and <clears throat> it's interesting to me as we talk about the universe providing us things. Uh, you know, I, I certainly did not provide that for myself that was something that came to me as a result of those tears, uh, you know, my, my prayers, my feeling um, like I just had to have help and, it, and I really did have help with that. Yeah, interesting that you talk about the universe, God, whatever, kind of showing you the place that where you feel you could just, because interesting, back in March, me and a friend went on a little, uh, went out of town, and I was out of town for like three and a half days, basically up in southern Utah. Went up and saw some areas that I've not seen before, we saw some areas that I did see, and then went down to southern Utah, uh, down to Kanab, Utah, and he and I, neither one of us had been down in that area. So I was in full wonder of how beautiful and how coming from up in the more northern part where Bryce Canyon, Zion and all that is um, in the kind of not middle, but southern middle and eastern part of the state down into the southern part of the state, how coming from all the high mountains and the colder weather down into the, you know, open and going in like you headed down into Arizona and stuff, how open and widespread and not much civilization it seemed like compared to like what I see here in Vegas and <clears throat> got to Knab, which is a, a town of about 4,500 people. I absolutely fell in love with that place. I just, I love it. It just left such an impression on me. And I, like you can see that I could really live there and really enjoy being in that place and it just and but it's interesting that I'm not at that point where I might want to move or you know I'm not looking to retire I've still got a lot of life to live but I it, I, I just absolutely fell in love with it there and yet I hadn't asked for it I hadn't really put it out there but maybe deep down in my subconscious maybe I had been putting it out there because of things going on in my life here and I didn't realize that I'm wondering how much that plays in to to what we put out of things and feelings and thoughts and desires that we express but we don't cognitive cognitively you know acknowledge or something but we know deep down they're there but we don't I wonder how much of that is also what's put out there that kind of goes against what we perceive and put out when we are really actively thinking it and what we think, oh, well, I would like this or like that. And how much, I wonder if that plays in and fights against what universe or God allows us to see or come into contact with as ways of moving forward in our life and where we can go and the directions we can take. Um, any thoughts there? Well, <clears throat> where I was at the time when I was telling you all of this was in uh, Washington, Utah, which is uh, a little bit north, probably a little bit northwest of um, St. George. And uh, all of that southern part of Utah is so beautiful with all the red sandstone and and like you said, Bryce and Zion and so forth. Um, and as you were talking about that and the, the other, you know, being a, unaware that that was something that you would want, you, ha you had 
known about it before and so forth, I realized that part of what made that so special for me, I had a, I had a little min pin, a, a miniature uh, pincher, and um, she was so beautiful. She was black and caramel, and she was just, uh, she looked like the, the uh, horses that draw the, you know, the carriages in, in England. She was, you know, of course, a dog, and she was miniature, so, so she was much smaller, but she just, she just looked regal, and she, she was so much fun, and we, we did so many walks together in that beautiful, beautiful country, and, and um, I, I worked with a woman who was moving uh, somewhere, and so she was getting rid of all of her plants, and she had pothos. She had a lot of them, and they they had really huge leaves, and they just draped from um, what actually was nearly my ceiling to my floor, and I was able to get uh, nearly all of them from her. She wanted to be sure they would be well taken care of and so forth, and I, I had at the time furniture that allowed me to put uh, put them up high and have them come down and still be able to water them easily. I mean, just little things that, you know, as I go about my life saying, I want this, I want that, um, most of us, you know, are not thinking uh, how, how ideal that would be. And I just absolutely loved some of those little aspects um, that made that place so special for me. It is interesting because I um, kind of like Samantha was talking about, you know, this house idea. I, I have several times uh, decided that I wanted to have a place that had bedrooms here, bathrooms there, decks uh, this way, uh, sat on a hillside here. You know, I just, I just had all these things lined out that I wanted. And uh, I haven't had near the satisfaction that I did with, with this little place, with some of the things that I've shared with you. So um, it really makes me want to revise the way that I go about um, deciding what I want, thinking about what I want, and this, this piece of the recipe for me that is perhaps most difficult is this I am self-love. Uh, so I want to put in the piece where I love myself, I enjoy myself, um, that makes me think of something else. Uh, I heard Mel Robbins, uh, if, you've, if you've heard her TED talk, if you've, if you've uh, caught some of her YouTube channel, uh, she's somebody that I, I really admire and I, I get a lot out of. And, and I heard her talk about uh, reading how unique each one of us is. You know, if you think about the parents that we have, the countries that they came from, um, the likelihood of, uh, you know, times that they had sex before they uh, conceived us, the I mean, just think about all of these aspects. And she said, it's like one in 400 billion trillion or something like that, that we would end up being who we are. And she says um, that what that says to her is that she is somebody special and she is somebody who deserves the opportunity and the right in life to to be her best self 
And um, it gave me such hope because uh, I know that one of the things that I have struggled with through my life is um, feeling worthy of the things that, that I want. So uh, I will end with that for the moment. Sorry, I was trying to help Jason be able to jump on because he was having trouble with the link. So I was trying to redo the link in our uh, group chat and stuff. But um, I, I think, you know, that there's a lot to be said in between about, you know, what you were talking about. Um, and hang on. Hang on. Ah, oh, okay. Um, hang on, let me tell him. Um, Samantha, do you mind jumping out and throwing your thoughts into this uh, while I help Jason a second? Oh, we got it. He's okay. Ah, welcome. Sorry about that. That's okay. I mean, welcome. I was having some technical difficulties, and then I'm driving through in-town traffic, so I had to pay attention to that. I think I got you switched back to the host. So. You did, and Jason's in now. Um, so welcome, Jason. Um, hey guys, good morning. Morning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was I was stuck in 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 the World Wide Web. <laughs> How you doing? We're doing good. We're uh, in chapter eleven. Uh, I read from the bottom of page one hundred and sixty over to. Uh, page 162 we're talking a little bit about um creating from a blank page as opposed to recreating from a story and we've been talking about that type of stuff cool cool yeah sounds, so, sounds good i'm sorry i missed it um missed so much of it um i was uh, i started out replying to someone some message this morning and it became a really long message and it took almost an hour. <laughs> and when the next thing I know, I'm getting dings on my phone going, are you coming? You going? And I'm like, oh, geez. No, that's okay. So we sorry, understand. So no problem. Yeah, creating from a blank page, huh? Yep. Um, yeah, you know, uh, our stories, um, I've been really wrestling with trying to figure out what story is it that kind of keeping me in this procrastination loop recently. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing that a lot of people, even like high level leaders have problems with procrastination themselves. And so this is a, this is an important topic, I think, you know, being able to uh, kind of clear off your, your uh, page so that you can, you know, grow from that instead of having your a, uh, your previous stories, um, you know, putting you back into some, uh, you know, um, misguided or mis misleading uh, loop, you know. So, I'm really well, basically, basically, what the book was saying was that we, um, it gave an example of a uh, uh, um, a poacher. You're using traps to catch monkeys and the monkey would reach in to grab the food and their hand would get caught. If the monkey just let go, his hand would have slipped right out of the, and he would have been free. And he's making that analogy of how we are with our stories, how we keep holding on to our stories rather than letting those stories go and fall and move on and go from that blank page to being able to move on. But we've also Lori was bringing up ideas of how, you know, we're still in the, in some ways, still in the confines of our physical world and the physicalness of things. And how, like for her, you know, being in her situation with the MS and things like that, I brought up the idea of me, you know, dealing with my past with my, you know, 
what I lived through as a child. Uh, Karen brought up some issues of, you know, things of where she's been trying to get to a place that she can live and, and feel comfortable. And, uh, so in that, yeah, and that we can't necessarily disregard those things because we're in that physical realm and that physical aspect of things. So how do we still be able to use that and, and have that? Because I think that's going back to, I think what Lori was saying, that's still part of our physical aspect and how other people see us and things that we bring in that help give us our sense of ourselves. But how do we also keep our sense of ourselves, but still move on with that blank page and move forward to whatever, you know, we're asking the universe to give us but at that same point, I also brought up the idea of that, you know, we have, you know, we have our conscious thoughts and desires of what we want from the world and things that we think we need and want. But at the same time, what about those subconscious or those desires that we're putting out that aren't, that we don't necessarily realize we're putting out, but they are in conflict with what we're, you know, putting out consciously and how does that affect us? And also, how does that affect what the world, what the universe and stuff shows us in getting us to where we can really go to that claiming I am self-love and get into that pure creation point and that stance. And Karen and Lori were both sharing, you know, some good, you know, thoughts and points on those things. And I, for me, you know, shared some points of you know alluding on to what cam was saying on finding a place i could see myself living in to finish out the rest of my life but yet i'm not at that stage in point but i saw this place a couple months ago and is that some place i really want to be or is that something that's part of my underlying stuff or it's you know really getting into some of those things of how much do we let go and how much can we really get to that blank page of creating and manifesting what we really want to have the lives that we truly want? All this brings up information that we've gathered from the last book we read. Uh, I can't even call, recall the name of it right this second, but Living within the limitations that you have, and if you decided the life that you're living before you even came here, which I think is totally possible, everything is totally possible. But being in a situation like mine, it's totally possible that I could be healed from MS tomorrow. Who knows? Today. Um, having lived through this has brought such a different perspective to my current situation and not allowing the way we were raised and the patterns that we've had in our lives. We have patterns. I do this because of that and how we can erase or eliminate that is what the new mentality uh, consciousness um is bringing about that we can have or be anything we can ask or think or imagine um and just trying to figure out what i want to create from this blank page um really doing the monkey mind what if it's not right what if it's not this or that and can really send yourself down a rabbit hole I guess we've been in a lot of rabbit holes haven't we um I'll leave it be for now well I'll go back to the book and read a little bit more um this is um the angels or 
whoever is Jared talking to is after he got, talks about the parts, then on my beliefs, judgments, ideas, etc. cetera. Um, in, that, in that part section, he was talking about um, like making, we building our own cars ourselves based on, you know, not knowing how to build a car, but we're going to build a car. And it's in the book. And if you have the book, uh, you can read that part. But he, the angel says, yes, and more. As an example, we would like to use the image of a needle. You've heard it said that it is harder for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom. And well, the rich man has stuff, has more stuff than a poor man. A poor man can say, I have nothing, therefore I surrender everything. The poor man has no story other than his being poor. And he, if he can give up his story, he will enter into the kingdom, which is we have mentioned is with in each of you. The rich man has many things and aspects of himself, which he is attached to. He says, I cannot let go of everything for if I do, I will be as poor as the poor man. His attachments have kept him from surrendering to the blank page from which creation is born, i.e. you without your story. Now we will provide another example because we do not wish to leave you with the idea that material possessions are a hindrance. They are mere, merely physical manifestations you have called forth from your desire to experience. Emotionally, you may say, I am an unhappy person. I am depressed. We will say, well, why are you depressed? You may answer in several ways. You might claim not to know. You might list things in life you think have made you unhappy, or you might say, I have a chemical imbalance. None of these answers would be incorrect, but they would also, they would all be aspects or parts with regard to your story of the depression. Could you let these things go? Can you see that none of them define who you are? They are just your experience. You cannot move through the eye of the needle to the blank page because your bag carrying your depression is too filled. You can let go of the story. We are not telling you. Wait, let me go back. You cannot move through the eye of the needle to the blank page because your bag carrying your depression is too filled. Can you let go of the story? We are not telling you, say you are not depressed and you will not be. We are saying, how is depression come to define you? How has your story kept you from what you wish to experience? Well, I did have a friend tell me that he had a cold and was tired of coughing and sneezing all day. So he sat down and repeated the mantra. I am perfect health for 20 minutes and it all just stopped. So I'm wondering, you know, like this, you know, is it really that simple as what it was saying there? Or in Lori's case, you know, she's, you know, she has MS. So, you know, will her saying I am in perfect health, will that change or make that stop? That's where I sometimes have problems with some of what they're saying is because of, yes, words have power. Yes, our thoughts have power and all that. But once again, I'm in this physicalness of where we're at and in the plane of physicality. Where, where does it really go from one to the other to override, so to speak, where we're at and what we're going through and what we're dealing with and maybe to help us move forward out of hanging on to the stories. I can totally understand what you're saying. Believe me, I was diagnosed in 93 and I've gone through the gamut. I've not gotten involved with the pharmaceutical side of it because none of the treatments are cures and they cause more problems than they cure they help and just speaking out loud for the longest time i'm my body is healthy and whole steady and strong and not seeing results and what gives a person the strength to go on and continue with belief and faith and 
the whole thing. I mean, I've done the things with churches or people, you know, the, the healings and all of that. And I've tried. I, um, I could fill this room I'm sitting in with the products that I've tried. And um, thinking back on the previous book, uh, we decided our life before we even came here for whatever reason and trying to put all the pieces together like a puzzle and being on this lockdown, I we put together 2,000 piece puzzles. I mean, these were difficult ones. And just it's making the correlation, <clears throat> excuse me, between all putting all these pieces together and what gives you the strength to carry on or throw in the towel or what can I create from this and from the position where I am and what I've been through long stories here we're not going to go into um, but having some people have one thing they focus on. I want to change my finances. I want to change my relationship. I want to change my health. And I'm in all the categories that come up. It just amazes me. But I think the important part is not what happens to us. It's how we respond to it. I don't know. I don't have the answers. <laughs> well, I think that's something, you know, like like between you and Catherine, you two are inspirations for me because somehow Catherine has learned to live with what she has dealt with through an accident that caused her situation. Yours is more from something that manifested itself over time that was something you had because my sister has MS, so I understand a little bit about that aspect, you know, and you two yet are still going on, living life, doing and doing things. So what is that difference between other people who don't seem to be able to function and carry on and move forward? And then also, how does, you know, how does that all play into, you know, how we keep moving? And if what he's talking about in this book i am self-love is part of how to get in and manifest things then where does that relate to in the last like in the last book we we talked about where we set this all up and designed it there and now we're experiencing here to take back there too so is all this all part of that one huge big even bigger puzzle that we're looking at and that we're dealing with and putting all those pieces together or you know is this another cog in the wheel and throwing it out there is this another thing that we're chasing to try and give us answers to answers that we don't necessarily know that to help placate ourselves and make ourselves feel better I think this this book brings up such a interesting myriad of possibilities and you know because on one hand it it talks like if you can just embrace this self-love thing and let go of every story that you've ever had that somehow you are a manifesting god of amazingness you know and and that you could do anything and yet in our human form we don't feel that, you know, I mean, sure, we feel some little bits here and there. We obviously know that we can create in some aspect, but I feel like we're so far removed from the God self that to be like Jesus, if you will, and be able to heal ourselves like a miracle or heal, heal other people 
or change our instant, you know, change things instantly for ourselves is so far beyond our ability to even grasp that even if we try and embrace this self-love aspect and as if that is the answer, we have to let go of everything it is to be a human in order to get to that point. And so it's kind of a contradiction. It's like, okay, you know, on one hand, sure, if, if, we, could, if, if we could just embrace this idea and let go of every other idea that maybe somehow we can be a god, and yet at the same time, as, as a human, we have all these desires, we have these wants, we want things a specific way, we want to experience something in a, you know, a, one specific thing, and where we want one thing to be healed, or we want a whole bunch of things, and we want them all in a certain way. And as, as a human, that's a natural thing, and we have all these expectations and wants and desires, and, and um, you know, if we're embracing our humanness, that's all part of it. But if we want to, I, I, it's just like, it's kind of like, a, okay, you know, I mean, we can, we can embrace our humanness and have these wants and desires and, and we can not cause ourselves as much pain by being angry or frustrated about what is and embrace, embrace what is and work from that. I feel like it's something that as humans, we can do that. We have, we have that capability to just recognize, okay, well, this is a situation. I have to make the best of it. And because I think that if we completely try and embrace the God aspect of ourselves, then that means we have to let go of everything it means to be human. So it's, you know, I, I don't know. Those are just kind of thoughts that are coming into my head. It's I don't, I don't know that, I don't think we can have, both i mean i could be way wrong i could be way wrong i mean who knows maybe we can have both but i don't see how because if we came here like uh what Lori was saying in the previous book we came here with a with a mission to have some experiences then how can we have those emotional roller coaster experiences life experiences without being human and you know i mean that's what we are so I, I think the key really to our happiness is to embrace what is in our lives and work from there, you know, work with what you got and whatever that is, uh, makes the best of it. And, um, you know, if there's some specific thing that we really, really, really don't like about ourselves and there is a way to change it, then we have to make those efforts to change it. You know, for instance, like, you know, weight loss, I mean, we know what to do, right? <laughs> we know what to do to do that. But yet we have these other desires that are stronger. And for me, it's like, I really want to eat ice cream and I want to eat stuff I'm not supposed to eat because it tastes good. I enjoy it, you know, but yet at the same time, I, you know, so it's a priority thing, you know, what's most important in the moment, you know, I mean, they, they talk about, you know, so many books talk about embracing the moment, not worrying and not, you know, so it's a combination of things. I mean, we're human, so we have to, we got to work with our human self if we want to have the full human experience, right? And if we are a spiritual creature that is having a human experience, then we just have to embrace that. And if we're, if we're not, if all we are is human, then we have to embrace that, you know, and work from where we are, because otherwise we're just making ourselves miserable for no reason. So those are my thoughts for now. I kind of agree with you, I, but I believe that we are spiritual beings, and I do believe that we can connect to, as I put it, God, but intelligent, you know, in, you know, kind of infinite intelligence and, sure. you know, all that. Uh, yeah, and because in my belief, I've been taught that God breathes life into us and that we are... Uh, connection with them and somehow through you know man's actions we have become separated and that i think is part of the humanness of where we're at but i believe that we can connect and that we can become connected and so you know but it's just finding that right connection back to where we can have the experiences, live the experiences, but still be in 
that full I am self love I am and be able to create and move and manifest into that you know into that better aspect of our humanness at this point until we die and go back to fully being with source or God or you know infinite intelligence however you look at it but I know people who have had miracles happen you know in their lives to where somebody was sick or something you know I've similarly uh, felt some relief it wasn't like, like a miracle but it was in when I let go and released everything when I was so distraught over maybe losing my home uh, you know 16 17 years ago that I felt peace. It was weird. I felt peace that things would work themselves out and be good and okay, and I'll move forward. And to this day, I'm still in my house. So, you know, I think if we look at it, I think we've all had those moments and those times where we can look and see something somewhere where something manifested itself and allowed things to happen to show us that maybe it can happen but we just don't know the exact full way of how to always tap into and maybe part of what this book is to helping us navigate through to letting go of some of those stories or letting go of those stories that really don't have the impact or the meaning and holding on to those that do to help us move forward as well as you know, within the limitations of where we're at and what we're dealing with and using other people's stories and experiences also to inspire us and move us forward. Like for me, you know, Catherine, Karen, you know, uh, Lori, you know, some of the things they've gone through, which are in some ways different. And I would say worse than some of what I've gone through, but then they're, or things I've gone through that other people might say was really bad and, you know, and, but I don't, I refuse to give up and just die too. Uh, that's something that's in me, you know, it's just there, but how is it not there in other people? So, you know, it, it's all those questions still keep coming up sometimes and, you know, keeps pushing me to, you know, search and, you know, Everything I've gone through and all the books we've talked to have all helped confirm a lot of what I believe and a lot of my beliefs, but it also has opened other doors and how much further do I go, so to speak. I guess it's as far as you want to go um, since it's all possibilities. I notice we're at the past the hour so i don't know how much we want to continue this week yeah i was going to say if anybody has any last thoughts or anything let's wrap it up because samantha's still on the road so i'm sure she wants to get back home i have some things i need to go and do and get done today um so i'll throw it out there to any last thoughts and stuff and we'll pick up next week hopefully we'll be back to normal and can get things back to where we're on facebook live and interacting with people and hopefully getting uh you know well, some you're responses saying there's that way something normal <laughs> you yeah think there is a normal <laughs> well normal for this group <laughs> it's our new normal <laughs> right on normal. i'd like to oh man out. You know, I, I think that um, Jason's trying to say something. Oh, sorry. I can't see everybody on my phone. That's okay. You're looking cool, though. You look pretty cool in those shades. Um, yeah, so I wanted to hop out because as you guys were speaking, uh, um, and uh, I, a, a number of things connected and started, I started connecting some dots and, and started realizing how, how, at least for me, you know, sometimes I'm in this mental uh, idea or, or mode of wanting to like look elsewhere for the, the answers or, or elsewhere for a motivation or elsewhere for 
you know, and then some other times I'm within, um, I'm, I'm in kind of the mode of just, you know, forgetting about all that other stuff and doing it, you know, like when you get into, when you get into focus and you're actually working on a project, now you're, you're in the project and you're not thinking about the reasons why it might not work out or, or, you know, you always have those thoughts beforehand or maybe after or in the middle of it when you step out of it and you're not focused on it and work actually working in it that's when the doubts and the fears and all that kind of seep in right so I mean, at least for me um and so i was also thinking about you know how and i'll try to pull all this together for you guys um as it is in in my mushed up brain right now but um the so like the rich man you said earlier the rich man um possibly he you know ha can't let go of of his possessions because he's afraid of being poor he can't and he can't let go of his will to strive to be to make more money because he actually has a fear of being poor whereas poor people some a lot of them they may they may have, may have you know low self-worth or you know feel like they don't deserve it but they may also have a fear of the wealth and see how the how wealth you know, more money, more problems type of situations. And they're like, yeah, maybe I don't really want all that. I need, I want, I just want this much, but I want enough to, to, you know, make myself, you know, whole and have, have what I need. And, but what I need isn't, you know, a mansion or whatever. So there, there's, there's that. So there's this different perspective and there's this different, there's these different, um, it's not even an understanding, but it's a, you know, they were, like you were saying, uh, I believe, Lori, about patterns and, you know, we, we grow up with these understandings and these patterns to where our beliefs start to fit in. And we're trying to make, you know, um, trying to figure out the world and where our place is in the world or where we want, how we want to think about the world. And um, so those understandings come up and then they end up being kind of our story, you know, like, or part of our story that can be, can be limiting. Um, you know, even for, uh, you know, a rich man who, you know, is the fear of being poor, he, that can be limiting to him because he may not connect with, with um, some very wonderful people and, and have some very wonderful experiences in his life because he has that fear of being poor. You might think, well, he's rich, but they have, they have other problems. <laughs> they have rich people problems too. So, um, you know, it's not always, grass isn't always greener on the other side. Um, so, um, you know, there's this perspective um, kind of, um, uh, 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 I don't know, like uh, just a uh, you know, way of, just you have to think about, we have a perspective, we have uh, our bodies, we have uh, that might be, you know, perspectives can limit us, our bodies can limit us, our environment can limit us, you know, you're talking about how we work as, as um, you know, in within this environment, within um, we, you know, the realities that we're facing, um, you know, we, we, we want to be, um, you know, we want to be self-employed and work as, as for ourselves, but it always seems like, you know, well, the, the way things are with the society, the way it is, we're always being pulled back into having to work for somebody else, uh, you know, because sometimes that may be easier or for whatever reason, or we don't feel like, you know, we have all these other things you know stories in our heads that might keep us back so and so our environment um as well and then our bodies too so we're dealing with we're dealing with these at least these th three things our perspective on things our environment that we're working within and and our actual physical bodies that that can limit us or, ourselves so i'm thinking uh i was thinking i'm like well this all kind of connects because this perspective is important um our, our perspective can you know, leads to leads us um, in and or you know, either propels us or hold us back or uh, helps us to focus or distracts us. You know, so um, so and 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 thinking about how when we get focused and we're actually in the work we're doing now, we're not thinking about the limitations. We're not thinking about all this other stuff. We're just in the moment, right? And so what you're saying um, there. Um, I believe, um, Samantha, I believe it was you, you were talking about uh, humanness, you know, and embracing things. And, um, 
you know, we were just talking about, I mean, you mentioned, you know, Lori, how you, how, um, you were diagnosed in 93 with your, with, with MS and, um, you know, and, um, I was, you guys were talking about, um, about everything. Uh, and I was, uh, and you were and and well, uh, Samantha, you were talking about, uh, embracing things and, uh, I was, you know, thinking like, yeah, in the, in the now, you know, the way things are in the now to embrace things because, um, you know, the other thing that limits us, uh, the fourth thing that I thought about that limits us is our time. We only have so much time and we may only, we may be experiencing this life in, um, you know, now in an uncomfortable state or, um, you know, a really rough state or maybe even a good state, but we, whether, whatever it is, um, we don't, we are limited on time. So, um, you know, it's kind of like make the most of it, I guess, you know, but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, if, when we're focused on what it is we want to do, what on, what we decide on what we do and forget about the wherefores and whys of what we, why we can't, then we can, well, then we will forget about the wherefores and whys and we'll be focused and we'll make the most of our time and we'll have a most, more, more fulfilling uh, life and a more fulfilling now. And, you know, our life is made up of now it's constantly right um, now and, and, and then now, you know, so, but we're, it seems like in, in, when we're studying these types of things, we're always looking for the answer out there somewhere in another time or another place or from another source. Whereas the, the answer in not to seem uh, cliche, but maybe the answer is really, you know, uh, and you, like you, like you can read my mind. Um, the, the answer is, is within us it, it is, is that we, within our focus, with our inner doing, uh, within our being of, uh, uh, we can, we can just, just go ahead and just go ahead and accomplish what you can. And cause, cause you know, when, when we, we run out of time, we run out of time and that, and then when we run out of time and we're, we're in the ether and we're, we're not limited by all these things, then we, that's when we experience the total, you know, self-love, I think. That's when we experience total spirit, spirit spirituality, um, you know. Um, so <laughs> right now we got what we can, what we can do with right now with all our ailments and our pains and our, and our concerns and stresses. Um, but that's the humanist side, right? That's the, the human um, uh, experience, I guess. And, uh, you know, so, but, um, but the good thing is that with that motivation and the focus, we can have, uh, as be as fulfilling, uh, uh, to ourselves, uh, as, as possible. So maybe, maybe just getting into it and focusing on whatever it is might be one of the keys. And, um, and maybe that motivator of time, uh, you know, keep that on the, on your shoulder. So thanks for hearing me out, guys. Um, sorry that was so long, but I hope I was able to kind of connect the dots as I was seeing them. Uh, really great to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, for all those that didn't hop on today, um, that we didn't see Catherine, and Sandy, and, and uh, uh, the others, uh, you know, we miss you. Uh, and uh, hope that you're going to have a great weekend. And you know, I'll hope to be here next week. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. The isness of now. I'll talk to you later. If nobody else has anything, I'm going to go ahead and end this. And we will, uh, don't forget, I'm putting this in for the recording. But if you want to know more or would like to know about us or join us, uh, you can always go to our Facebook page um, at Mindset Mastery Collective. Um, in Facebook, or you can go to mindsetmastery.com. I think there's some information there that you can still get. Hopefully, I think our pages are getting worked on. Um, or get a hold of one of us to Facebook, and we can help get you set up and get you plugged in. Um, please, if you see the video, like, thumbs up, and you know all that. And we appreciate y'all, and look forward to next week.